Good morning, everyone. I am now here in Yorkshire in a very old apartment. Uh, this is a remarkable place, to say the least. Um, it lacks high-speed internet and other things, but if you do like uh, the old way of living in England, which sometimes I have a certain nostalgic uh, desire to kind of live the same way as I remember doing when I came here the first time in 1977 when I was eight years old, years old, well, this is the place for you. I kind of feel like, you know, up, upstairs in my little bedroom that I'm James Harriet out of uh, All Creatures Great and Small. But enough talk about that. Let's talk about Artemis. A lot of people are expressing frustration over the fact that they're going to not only scrub the launch attempt, but also possibly move the vehicle back to the VAB because of the storm, that sort of thing. I'm kind of on the other side of the fence. Well, I'm not just kind of on the other side of the fence. I'm really on the other side of the fence. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they haven't already announced that they're going to be taking the rocket back to the VAB. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... You see, as my aunt and uncle came to realize over the course of many decades of living in Florida, hurricanes have a tendency to behave very unpredictably. And Hurricane Ian, or Tropical Storm Ian, if that's still what it is right now, is forecast to become a cat for monster. Now, it wasn't that at the time that NASA was discussing this issue, but still, I mean, this should not even be an issue right now. Yeah, the storm is not going to hit on at Cape Canaveral. It's going to actually hit on the other side of the peninsula, but still, these things can be unbelievably devastating and deliver sustained winds far in excess of the 70-some-odd knots that they were talking about during the press conference. So why aren't they moving the rocket back already? Why hasn't this announcement been made? Now, it could be made by the time this video actually gets released, but still, the answers are not pleasant. You see, believe it or not, it's been 17 months since the green run, since the final real significant test that this rocket was supposed to undergo before it was prepared for launch. They were talking about launching it at the end of last year, and here we are, almost October, and it still hasn't taken off. Even the greatest pessimists were talking about a summer 2022 launch, not something this late. And no matter how many times NASA may say that we're going to launch when it's ready, I'm telling you, the pressure may very well be bearing down on them right now because this thing is costing the American taxpayer about a million dollars every day that it doesn't launch. And as we've learned in the past, the more you try to rush things because there's pressure coming from on high to get a rocket off the ground, well, we've learned back in 1986, obviously, that that can have disastrous consequences. But there could be even more unpleasant reasons that this is happening right now. It could very well be that the most recent fueling test was so marginal that they're afraid to move this thing thing. They really want to get Artemis 1 off the ground as rapidly as possible while it's still within the realm of acceptable risk as far as the hydrogen leak is concerned. I really don't think they're ever going to be able to fully track down that leak and or rather all the leaks that exist in this screwed up launch system that they've got, that launch tower that I have criticized so many times. That being the case, I I believe that they just want to leave things kind of as it is and hope for the best when they actually try to launch. If they move this thing, okay, all right, just fuel it up a little bit more and got it. Yeah, 
Yeah, we did it. It's within, is it within the margins? Is it just, okay, all right, cool. Yeah, we got it. Just just let it sit right there. Nobody touch anything. Hey, Joe, I'm sorry, but the word has come down from on high. Administrator Nelson says that we have to move this thing back to the VAB. No, no, damn it. We're not going to do that. Jesus, it has taken us days, weeks, months to get it to this point. I am not moving moving this damn thing. We are kidding. Hey, did you touch? Don't you touch anything. I swear to God. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, sir. We're leaving this thing right here as it is. It's rated to handle some pretty strong winds, so I think it's going to be all right. A lot better than if we try to move. Sorry about this, Joe, but we are moving it. Now, let's see. Is it this switch? Jesus, don't touch that. And there are other reasons that really add to the sense of urgency as well. For example, the whole solid rocket booster stacking thing. We keep saying, oh yeah, we can extend it. We can extend it out. We got more time on these things. We really don't. These things are running out of time. They really shouldn't be stacked this long. And they're going to have to be unstacked and recertified if we don't get this rocket off the ground soon. All of these things are piling the pressure onto the Artemis team in a huge way, especially the ground systems managers who are operating, as I've said before, with a system that they don't even completely understand. They can't understand it because three different contractors contributed to this cobbled together piece of garbage and there is no master blueprint, therefore no way to fully understand how how the thing works. Therefore, if you've got it to a point to where it's within acceptable guidelines, you don't want to mess around with it. And yet it seems that that's what they're going to have to do. Really, I don't see them having any choice whatsoever. A Category 4 hurricane, even on the other side of the peninsula, can produce sustained winds far in excess of what they were talking about on the 23rd. Again, it surprises me that it hasn't been announced yet. It probably will be by the time this video is released, but the fact that that hasn't happened yet suggests that all is not well at the Cape. And the longer this goes, the longer this drags out, the greater the chance is that something bad is going to happen during the first and extremely important test of SLS and the entire Artemis program. God, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope this rocket takes off successfully, that they manage to jury rig things together just long enough to get the rocket off the pad. If they can manage to do that, I think the rest of SLS will perform as expected. Everything about Orion, ICPS, Green Run with the main rocket, the engines, the solid rocket boosters, everything has looked quite nominal in quite a number of tests at this point. I really feel that if they can just get this rocket away from ML1, things are going to improve dramatically. But if every passing day, that becomes less and less likely. Please like, please subscribe, keep following my content as I continue to travel Europe and bring you details about spaceflight that very few people are covering right now. There's going to be more videos about this topic linked at the end of the description. And also, please check the description for various ways to support my content so I can keep this stuff coming to you in the future. And as always, stay angry about space.